What's up guys, Chris Allen with Chris Allen Fitness. This video is about progressive resistance training. The best example of this is this gentleman up here. His name is Milo, he was a Greek wrestler 2,500 years ago. His story is that one day he's walking along in a village, sees a newborn calf. He picks up the calf, puts it on his shoulders, and walks around. The next day he comes back, the calf is a little bit bigger. Again, he puts it on his shoulders and walks around. And he keeps doing this for four years. So at the end of four years, Milo is walking around with a bull on his shoulders, and he's grown bigger because the bull got bigger every single day. That, in a nutshell, is progressive resistance training. And I promise you, if you listen to what I do and follow through on the actions that I suggest, you will not be able to walk around with a 2,000 pound bull on your shoulders in the next four years. But first, keep a training journal. Hey, what are you doing? Record your exercises, sets, reps, and weight, and length of time to complete your workouts. Record how you felt, how difficult or easy the sets were. If you don't know what you lifted last week or six months ago, measuring progress is almost impossible. Each time we work out, we impose a level of stress upon ourselves. Our adaptation to this stress is why we can get bigger and stronger as a result of lifting weights. The minimum level of stress needed to stimulate an adaptive response that results in an increase in size or strength is up for debate. I can confidently state that when terminating a set when one is 10 reps away from failure, that's a warm-up set. Working sets, the ones that should count, should be between five repetitions from failure and actual muscular failure. Should the imposed level of stress stay the same, adaptation will cease. Progressive resistance training is the method we use to gradually increase our level of stress. Here are eight ways you can use progressive resistance training in your workout. Number one, add weights. Adding a little bit of weight to the bar adds up over time. 5 pounds a week turns into 250 pounds over the course of a year, which is most likely not going to happen, as we can't keep adding weight to infinity and beyond. We can combine this with method number two, add reps. Instead of adding weight, do more reps. As an example, perform three sets of eight reps for a given exercise in week one. Week two, perform three sets of 10 reps. Week three, perform three sets of 12 reps. Week four, add weight and drop the reps to eight. And keep repeating this process until you are unable to add reps or weight. Now here's an example from weights that I actually used in my program that I'll write on this dry erase board right over here. As requested, and yes, I know my penmanship is really great. Here are sets, reps, and weight used in previous workouts over the last seven or eight weeks. So I started out with three sets of eight reps, 135 pounds. You do the math, you get a total workload of 3,240 pounds. The next week, three sets of 10 reps, 4,050 pounds, and then three sets of 12 reps for 4,860 pounds of a total workload. Week four, I got tired of writing the three times eight, but I dropped it down from three times 12 to three times eight, so 24 reps. Bump the weight up by 20 pounds to 155. That gives me a total workload of 4,000 of that. A total workload of 3,720 pounds. I then kept increasing this. So the workload then was 4,650 pounds, 5,580 pounds. Week seven or whatever, lowered it to three sets of eight again, but increased the weight by 20 pounds to 175. Total workload of 4,200 pounds. The following week, three sets of 10, total workload, 5,250 pounds. You'll notice a pattern here. From the starting week, I go up by total workload for two weeks, down. Go up again by two, down. So I'm taking two steps forward, one step back. Also, you'll notice right here, when I went down, the total workload is 4,200 pounds, which is still greater than the total workload in week number two of 4,050 pounds. Now a couple of caveats here. If this was my actual max, three times eight times one, or three sets of eight reps with 155 pounds, and I started here, I'm gonna hit failure sometime in week two or week three because I'm too close to what my max capacity is. Likewise, if instead of 175, see it's really down here somewhere where I could really do 225 for three sets of 10 or three sets of 12, 
Then starting with 135, as I previously mentioned, this is really a warm-up set. And now I'm committing to, with the 225 example, essentially a 16 or 20 week workout plan where probably half of the weeks, weeks one through 10, are really warm-up sets because I'm not actually giving my body an imposed stress that will result in an increase in size and or strength. So a double progression method where I'm increasing the reps with a given weight until I can do a certain amount of reps, then I increase the weight, drop the reps down, increase the reps, continue that, and eventually drop the reps down, increase the weight again. Number three, add sets. Adding one set to a given exercise will result in more total weight being lifted in the workout. For example, adding one set of 10 reps will increase your total poundage lifted by 1,000 pounds. Judiciously adding sets can be a stimulus for increases in size and strength. However, we want to avoid junk volume, which is sets that don't contribute to our training goals. Again, your training journal will give you feedback. If you notice increased fatigue and joint pain whenever your total weekly sets for chest meet or exceed 16, for example, that's an indication that perhaps you should not perform more than 15 sets per week for chest. You could set up a six week training block for chest where in week one you perform 10 sets, week two 11, all the way up until week six where you do 15 sets and then go back down to 10 sets for week seven or do a deload. Number four, decrease your rest periods. Time your rest breaks between sets. Decrease the time between sets by 10 to 15 seconds each week. This will progressively increase your workload per minute and as a bonus, will decrease total time per workout. Number five, add pauses or one and one quarter or one and one half reps to your sets. When performing the set, pause for a count of one or two on either the positive or negative stroke of the rep. This will increase the time under tension of the set. Another option is to use one and one quarters. Lower the weight under control to the bottom of the rep, raise the weight up one quarter of the way, lower the weight back to the bottom, and raise the weight back to the top. Alternatively, once the weight gets to the top, you could lower it halfway, raise it up to the top, and then lower it under control to the bottom. This will result in you moving the weight a greater distance in each rep and set. Number six. Using a slower negative increases the time under tension and can reduce momentum or the stretch reflex. Try performing reps with a three or four second negative. A set of 10 reps with a 1 second negative and positive will take about 20 seconds. However, a 4 second negative will add about 30 seconds to the set. If the majority of your sets last about 20 seconds, performing sets between 40 and 50 seconds can be a novel stimulus. Number 7. Increase your range of motion. This won't work for all exercises. A single joint exercise like a bicep curl typically uses the entire range of motion. Here are two examples. This is a banded deadlift performed from about a six inch block. Basically, I've added an additional foot to each rep compared to doing the exercise without a six inch block. Example number two is chin-ups. If the typical rep ends when the chin-up reaches the bar, start doing clavicle chin-ups, ending the rep when the clavicle touches the bar. If and or when the desired number of clavicle reps is reached, move on to sternum chin-ups. Think of what the difference will be in your back and your biceps when you can go from doing 10 chin-ups where the bar just comes up to your chin to 10 clavicle chin-ups to doing 10 sternum chin-ups. Not many people in the world are capable of doing 10 dead hang sternum chin-ups. Number eight, use bands with barbells. Using bands can allow you to use more weight in your strongest range of motion while still challenging yourself in the weaker range of motion. You can attach the bands up high, and as you lower the barbell, the amount of weight on the bar will decrease as the tension in the bands increases. You can attach the bands to the floor, and you will experience the sensation of being pulled down to the floor at the top of the movement. Here I'm using the bands to make the top of the movement be around 50 pounds heavier than the bottom. All right, there you go. Eight different ways you can add progressive resistance training to your workouts. As always, please, if you haven't already subscribed, please do that. Click the like button and click on the notifications so you know when more of my videos drop. Thank you. Have a great day.